Chapter 41 A Visit to Grandma's Celia's Hut You are listening at NovelFull.audio As Orion stood there, mesmerized by the emerald glow emanating from Celeste's hands, he felt a sense of awe wash over him. The wet clay seemed to come alive, moving and shaping itself into a beautiful clay pot under his mother's skillful hands. The surrounding was filled with the scent of earth and the sound of the potter's will turning. Sweat glistened on Celeste's forehead as she worked, her eyes focused on the task at hand. Finally, after what seemed like hours, the clay pot was complete, rising up from the wheel and hardening into a beautiful, sturdy vessel. That's it, Celeste exclaimed, wiping the sweat from her brow. Orion couldn't help but marvel at his mother's talent, but he was also curious. So what do you think, she asked, turning to face him. It's amazing, he replied, his eyes still fixed on the clay pot. But is this all your gift can do? Not that he was disappointed, but he had just witnessed a remarkable feat a woman drawing water from a well without a sow, so, when he saw his mother shaping a clay pot, it seemed a bit underwhelming in comparison. Well, I can do much more than this if you want to see, Celeste exclaimed, buoyed by her son's praise. She felt a surge of pride knowing that she possessed such a gift and could showcase it to her son. As Orion nodded in response, Celeste rose to her feet and strode over to the sand clays. She turned to face her son and said, watch this. A proud smile illuminated her face as she extended her hand over the sand clay, which shimmered with an emerald radiance. As Celeste continued to work her magic, the clay sand swirled and coalesced into the form of a mortar and pestle, with intricate details etched into its surface. Orion's amazement grew as he watched his mother's skill and precision at work. So you can mold the clay into any shape you want, Orion marveled, his mind racing with the possibilities of his mother's gift. In a primitive world where even the most basic tools were made of clay, her abilities could prove to be invaluable. Celeste nodded in agreement, using the back of her hand to wipe away the beads of sweat that had formed on her forehead. She let out a tired sigh, explaining the limitations of her gift to Orion. The size and complexity of what I can make depends on how long it will take me to complete it or whether I'm capable of doing it at all, she said, her voice laced with fatigue. Currently, I can only use my gift to make one clay tank a day, or a maximum of six clay pots. Anything more than that would leave me exhausted or unconscious. However, if I do small tasks like adding water and mixing on the wheel, I can reduce the stress and make up to three more clay pots. As she spoke, Celeste couldn't help but wish that her gift allowed her to do more. She knew how useful it was to the village, but she had to accept the limitations of her abilities. So it wasn't as powerful as I had thought, or I an internally sighed in disappointment. Abruptly, he remembered the Amazonian well woman and couldn't help but think if her ability also had a limit to the quantity of water that she could control. In fact, the more he thought about it, the more he believed that she did. All right, now that we are done showing you what I can do, you can leave and find something to do to keep yourself busy, Celeste said to her son, shooing him away as she knew that she wouldn't be able to get any work done if he was present. With understanding, Orion nodded his head and left the backyard. He walked into their supposed living room and decided to see what was in the other two rooms. Click. He opened the door and walked into the first one. Seeing several piles of the strange fruit that he had been eating in the corner, a clay dot molded sink, and some stacked wooden bowls and plates, he could already tell that this was their kitchen. Dot without hesitation, he closed the door and walked into the next room. A quiet snore assaulted his ears as he saw his younger sister sleeping on a mat with different piles of clothes surrounding her. This must be our room, he thought. Quietly closing the door to avoid waking up his sister, Orion walked into the living room and couldn't help but sigh at how there was barely anything that could keep his attention hooked for hours. At least now he understood why Gina was still sleeping at this hour. After several seconds of bouncing around from one thought to another, Orion finally made up his mind and sighed in defeat. What can I do when the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, he muttered to himself as he stepped out of their hut, making sure to close the door, and walked towards Grandma Celia's hut. On his way, 
he didn't even bother looking at the neighboring huts and simply made his way straight to the aged woman's hut. After a minute, he arrived. Knock. Knock. Patiently waiting for several seconds, Orion knocked again as he didn't get a response. He knocked several times and was about to leave, thinking that nobody was home until the wooden door was abruptly pulled open, who is there? The sound of a woman's voice rang in his ears as the door was finally pulled open to reveal the owner of the voice. Oh, sorry for keeping you waiting, I wasn't expecting any visitors this morning, Grandma Derry said as she stared at Orion in surprise meanwhile, Orion couldn't help but gulp at the amazing sight in front of him. In front of him was Grandma Derry, her body wet and dripping. Her huge melons was hidden unsuccessfully behind a small piece of cloth that revealed her inner thigh and beautiful legs. Regardless, Orion didn't lose his composure and responded, Is Grandma Celia in? he asked. Chapter 42 Den of You are listening at NovelFull.audio Grandma Derry nodded, and couldn't help but wonder why the young boy was looking for Celia. Am I missing something here, she thought, trying to read the expression on Orion's face. Orion cleared his throat and began his rehearsed speech. Can I stay here until nighttime, he asked. I am kind of bored, and there is nothing to do at home. So, I decided to come here and spend the rest of the day until I am ready to go home. Grandma Derry blinked at his words, trying to process them. She repeated them a few times in her head and couldn't help but say, come again. You want to spend the day here. Orion saw the disbelief in Grandma Derry's eyes and couldn't help but wonder if he had misspoken. Nonetheless, he repeated his words, I want to stay here until it's night time for me to go home. After hearing the same thing again, Grandma Derry no longer doubted that she had heard correctly. The boy was actually asking if he could come and spend time at their place. With a deep sigh, she gestured for him to come in. Orion walked in and watched as she closed the door without hesitation. His eyes were glued to her stunning body as he watched her remove the piece of cloth that barely did its job and used it to clean her hair. Celia, you have a visitor, Grandma Derry screamed. She picked up her gown that she had hurriedly dropped on the ground and put it on. However, Orion couldn't keep his hands to himself any longer when he saw her putting her cloth over her head. Let me help you with that, Grandma Derry, he said, offering his help. Without even waiting for a response, Orion moved his hands over her two large melons before he grabbed her gown and pulled it down. Thank you, Grandma Derry said with a smile of appreciation as she stared at the young boy beside her. Although she wasn't one to frequently voice her thoughts, she was beginning to like this new Orion. No problem, Orion responded as he latched his hand over her large buttocks squeezed it tightly. As expected, there was no reaction. She only looked at him briefly before drawing her eyes towards a figure that came from the backyard. Grandma Celia came out of the backyard with a completely drenched body. It looks like they were taking their bath too, Orion thought to himself as he feasted his eyes with a completing naked view of Grandma Celia's naked body. Orion, she blurted out in surprise before looking towards Grandma Derry who immediately replied, Don't look at me like that. The boy said he was looking for you and that he wanted to spend the day in our hut. Grandma Celia's eyes widened in surprise once more before she nodded her understanding. Although she had told Orion that he could come over any time he wanted, she didn't know that he would take it seriously and return only after a day. Regardless, somehow, she felt relieved that he was here. It felt that somehow, all the things he had said yesterday were true and weren't done just to comfort her. Hold on a minute, I'm coming, she said to Orion before turning her head towards the backyard and yelling, Celeste's son is here, Vivian. Hurry up and come and see. Orion's brows shot up in surprise as soon as he heard her words. I wonder how many people are sharing this hut, he thought. Nonetheless, he could already sense that the new arrival would make him duck throb. Orion watched as Grandma Celia walked into the room and came out with a piece of cloth in her hand, already covering her body with her slitted dress. Soon after, with a perfect timing, a new gilf came into Orion's view. She stared at him while he stared at her, mostly at her body. 
Although, she wasn't as thick as Grandma Celia and Grandma Derry, he could see a more than enough ass that was enough for a dick riding. He waited until she was done cleaning herself and putting on her tolga, which surprisingly looked like a knee-dot-length strapless dress. Behind her, it became shorter, only stopping above her thighs. And within several seconds later, Orion was surrounded by three Gogus gilfs, looking at him with an amazing smile. Yeah, I made the right choice Orion thought as Grandma Vivian immediately hugged his head into her bountiful breasts, while his hands sneaked under her dress and grabbed her raw fleshy buttocks. However, he had to let go when she released and pinched his cheeks. How are you doing, son? I heard what happened to you. Her voice carried a sad tone to it as she looked at Orion from head to toe. Orion responded, don't worry, I'm fine and feeling much better now. Grandma nodded her head in relief. She had been worried after seeing Celeste's state, so knowing that her son was alright brought her a wave of relief. Thank goodness, she said feeling as though his hands should not be empty at a time like this, Orion stepped close to her and wrapped his arm around her waist. Don't mind me. Grandma Vivian. I'm just here to waste my time until nighttime because I'm bored, so you can carry on with your day and pretend as though I'm not around. That she was about to respond when Grandma Celia suddenly replied, No problem. Click. Immediately after her words, the sound of the door closing rang in all of their ears. With the absence of Grandma Derry, it was clear who had just gone out. Grandma Vivian sighed in defeat, she snuck out again. A loud snort sounded as Grandma Celia responded to her friend, don't worry, she promised to tell me where she has been going before the end of the week. So until then, let her do what wants, as long as she has a reasonable excuse, she then turned her withdrew her eyes from her and looked at Orion. You can stay with him, I will come join you guys when I am done finishing my own part of the chore, Grandma Celia said as she turned around and walked towards the kitchen, her words trailing behind her. Chapter 43 Grandma Vivian's Exposed Buttocks You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. With only the two of them left in the room, Grandma Vivian turned her head towards Orion and asked, So, what brings you here? Is there anything I can help you with? Her voice was filled with curiosity. Orion gave a small smile and shook his head, I'm just here because I was feeling bored. But if you have any tasks to do, I wouldn't mind lending a hand. He responded, cupping the other rear end of her bountiful cheeks. Surprisingly, he was beginning to miss the concept of panties and undergarments as that would have made his invasion of Grandma Vivian's bare buttocks a little more exciting and thrilling. Grandma Vivian nodded thoughtfully in response, well, since I don't follow the others to work, and Celia had decided to stay with me at home, I don't really have much to do except rest and wait until they came back. Orion couldn't help but shake his head internally at the fact that what she had just said would be interpreted as, I am going to keep myself company with nothing until evening, a sigh escaped his lips as he began to also miss his entertainment. Nevertheless, since they were both going to be idle for the rest of the day, there was no reason for him not to go straight ahead and focus on his main reason for being here. He freed her ass from his grasp and asked, Can you bend down a little, Grandma Vivian, I want to check something. Grandma Vivian looked at the boy curiously and wondered what he was up to. Still, since he wasn't asking for much, she bent down a little and rested her hand on her knee, using it as her support. As she watched Orion from the corner of her eye disappear behind her, her curiosity was piqued and she asked, What do you want to do? Meanwhile, Orion couldn't help but nod his head as he looked out at something. I just wanted to see how large your buttock is and compare it to Grandma Celia's, he responded, feeling his throbbing penis finally stand straight, pressing against his tolga. Grandma Vivian was astounded by what she had just heard. Without hesitation, she straightened her back and turned around to look at Orion with a frown on her face and an intense gaze in her eyes. Witnessing her action and expression, Orion quickly added, Grandma Celia allowed me to play with her body yesterday, and she had much larger buttocks than your own, so I just wanted to ask to confirm if it were true. Since the world's sexual knowledge was so non-existent to the extent that his mother can stroke his penis during their bath, Orion wanted to find out how much he could get away with his words. He knew that there was a limit somewhere, however since he was the only one around, to know about this, 
what other way could he find out about the limits without testing the waters himself? So this was his reason, Grandma Vivian sighed in relief. From Orion's words, it was obvious that he wasn't attracted to Celia's body and simply wanted to find out if hers were smaller than Celia's. Of course, his reasons were understandable since she was well aware of how unattractive her body was. Even though she had a wide, fleshy buttock that was smaller than Celia's, it was still large enough to be considered unattractive. She quickly responded, Yes, your grandma Celia's buttocks are way bigger than mine. She then proceeded to chuckle at the thought of her friend walking in on them and hearing their discussion. But don't tell her that, okay? She still believes that hers is much smaller than mine. Orion dazedly nodded his head at the sudden change in the atmosphere of the conversation. He had thought that he was already waist-deep in understanding how this world works, but in reality, it seemed that he was still at the shore with only one foot in the water. Time to get down to business, Orion thought mischievously as he stared at the amused gilf in front of him and said, Can you bend down so that I can check it out? This time around, Grandma Vivian didn't only bend down, but raised her gown and anchored it on top of her buttocks. She then spread her legs a little and said, Go ahead. Orion didn't need to be anything more than that before he positioned himself once more behind her and began to sample her firm behind. He raised his hand and gently slapped them with enough force to make her buttocks vibrate so that he can test its juggling momentum. He nodded in appreciation at the sight of two protruding cheeks rippling with an enticing force. This is good, Orion muttered to himself as he pulled down his tolga and stood bare and naked in the middle of the room. Grandma Vivian felt Orion's hand running against her enormous buttocks and couldn't help but furrow her eyebrows once more. Although she could tell that he wanted to not only make his test, but also play with her body the same way he had played with Celia's, she didn't refuse as there was no reason not to let him do so. Nevertheless, since the first time she had met Orion, he had always been a shy young man. She couldn't help but wonder if he was trying to use her to practice for the upcoming awakening ceremony, as he was old enough to participate in this year's own. However, she was unsure if her assumption was right or wrong. Grandma Vivian Orion called out for the aged woman's attention, dragging her out of her thoughts. Immediately Grandma Vivian wanted to respond, but she felt something inserting itself into her vagina, causing her to moan out abruptly, ah, 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 seeing her moan out loud every time he stuck his three fingers at once in her and removed it, Orion continued keeping his thrusting and withdrawing technique at the same rhythm with a grin on his face. BL.net. Chapter 44 Disvergining You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A-H-A-H-H, suddenly, the door to the kitchen was swung open, followed by an anxious shout. What is going on? Grandma Celia's sudden gasp of breath echoed throughout the room as she rushed out of the kitchen, expecting to see something bad. To her surprise, she found that it was just Orion, who was playing with her friend's body the same way he had done with her the day before. Grandma Celia released a deep sigh as she observed Grandma Vivian with her dress pulled up over her protruding buttocks and Orion's fingers moving in and out of her vagina. Vivian, can you try to lower your voice? Someone might run in here thinking something bad is happening, she scolded her friend. Grandma Vivian was already getting used to Orion's rhythm, so she responded with some effort, D, uh, or E I W, uh, try, she said with a mix of embarrassment and pleasure. Though her words were a bit incoherent, both Orion and Grandma Celia could hear what she said. Okay, Grandma Celia nodded her head before focusing her attention on Orion, and you, don't force her to continue with your games once she gets tired, she said. Orion nodded with a smile, don't worry, I won't go as far as forcing her once she gets tired, hearing the young boy's words, she nodded her head and walked towards the side with her voice trailing behind her as she left. I will come and join you all once I am done. Orion's expression lit up with joy excited as he heart trembled with anticipation at hat he had just heard. Two fuckable gilfs each laying under his control was a thought that he could not get rid of easily. As such, with the same excited, he fastened his pace, feeling his fingers slowly being drenched in some pussy juice. H-H-U-H-H-U-Ah, at this point, 
Grandma Vivian had already kept both her hands on the ground and stretched her firm enormous buttocks towards the clay-molded ceiling. An Orion who was itching to stick his penis in, grabbed her dress and plunged his rock-hard shaft deep into her vagina. You 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 Grandma Vivian's eyes shot wide open as her high-pitched voice ranged across the hut. Within seconds, she gently collapsed face first on the ground with her buttocks still pointed upwards as it slid out of Orion's penis. Orion blinked at her sudden haggard form as she gasped for breath while her body heaved up and down. From how tight her pussy felt when he plunged in at one go, he knew that he might have overdone it a little. Ha! Ha! As Grandma Vivian breathed rapidly, she turned he head to the side with some effort and said to Orion, It seems that I am not as energetic as I used to be. Let me rest for some minutes before we continue. No, Orion responded, I think it's because I tried to force my penis down your vagina all out once, instead of taking slowly. A thin smile appeared on Grandma Vivian's lips as she knew that her hole wasn't loose enough to allow his penetration in one go. Although she was ashamed of Orion realizing that for a woman like age to have a really tight vagina like hers meant that she wasn't that experienced in cushy, she still pushed through and decided not to let the shame tie her down. Why don't you try again, but take it a little easy this time? She responded. Are you sure? Orion asked with a fake doubt on his face as her looked her dripping tight vagina. Although he would love to dive in with no questions asked, there was still no harm in trying to be caring at least. Dot, yes, Grandma Vivian bobbed her tiredly. And another to convince Orion that he should continue with what he was, she widened her legs again to shape of a V drawn upside down. Orion gulped at the tantasiling sight. And without further ado, he latched his fingers on her protruding buttocks and positioned his penis into her dripping vagina. Slowly, he pushed it in, while listening to the short gasp of Grandma Vivian's moans that played in the background. Ah, a little more, Orion said in a reassuring tone as he pushed his penis inside her tight gripping vagina. The force he felt was more than enough to push his dick out, making him grab both sides of her ass, and with, plup, he penis was deeply shelved within her vagina. Um, Grandma Vivian couldn't help but moan with her teeth sealed shut at the sudden fullness that came from her vagina. She couldn't remember the last time she felt like this. And even trying to remember brought back bad memories that she wished she wanted to forget. Pa. 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 As though Orion had somehow managed to read her thoughts, he hammered his penis into her gripping vagina. At first, it was difficult since every pull made her inner wall want to push him out, and every penetration felt as though he was trying to force his way through the walls of Babylon. Pa. Pa. Squench, pa. Pa. But the same those walls fell, were the same her inner fleshy walls soon parted, and gently wrapped around his penis. It began to shape and mold around his venous shaft, making Orion fell like his had just disvirgined a virgin. A thought he wished was true, but nonetheless, he wasn't disappointed as he gazed at moaning Gilf being hammered underneath him and couldn't help but raise his hand and slap her wide buttocks gently. Fuck. Orion moaned out quietly as he could feel her already tight vagina arresting his throbbing dick before it was freed. Pa. Squench, pa. Pa. Orion, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Ryan, he felt that she wanted to say something but instead of slowly down to hear her words, Orion hammered away with a more brutal force as he clapped her cheeks without restraints. Squench, pa. Squench. Chapter 45 Den of Debauchery, 2, R18, You are listening at NovelFull.audio. A-G-G-G-G-G-H-H-O, Grandma Vivian let out a deafening moan as Orion's slow and steady movements made her feel like she was on a wild ride. From the corner of her eye, she caught a glimpse of her friend, who seemed to be enjoying the spectacle as the young boy played with her body. I'm coming, Orion exclaimed for the third time, his voice rising from the pleasure. And just as before, he poured his thick semen into her slippery vagina, causing it to overflow. Grandma Vivian had initially contemplated drinking the sweet nectar, but after the first round where she had consumed it all without a single drop spilling, she was too exhausted to even turn her head. 
Instead, she simply reveled in the sensation of the sticky substance, every time he forcefully poured it deep into her vagina, plugging her hole with it. Orion let out a triumphant shout as he poured his semen into her pussy, before collapsing onto the ground with a satisfied thud. Ha! H.A.A. Gasping for breath, he wiped the beads of sweat from his forehead and watched as his semen overflowed from her wet pink hole falling onto the ground in front of him. The moment was both exhilarating and exhausting, and he couldn't help but smile at the thought of what he had just experienced. I think that's enough for now. Why don't you take a break and rest up before continuing your games? Grandma Celia spoke with a serious tone, her gaze shifting from Orion to her friend. Observing the way Vivian panted heavily with her tongue lolling out of her mouth, she knew that she wouldn't be able to continue much longer. I agree, Orion chimed in, acknowledging the need for Grandma Vivian to rest. Despite his eagerness to continue, he recognized that it was time to stop for now. Grandma Vivian wanted to reply, but with her face planted on the ground and her breaths coming in short gasps, she could only watch as Celia came to her aid and helped her up, guiding her towards the backyard to clean up and recuperate. Orion watched as they walked out of sight, wishing for them to return soon. After a few minutes, they both entered the room, with Grandma Vivian holding onto Grandma Celia's shoulders for support as she walked with unsteady steps. Meanwhile, Grandma Celia carried a damp cloth, which she used to wipe down the area where they had been playing before walking back outside to the backyard. Orion, Grandma Vivian spoke up, surprised at the fact a young boy like Orion could feel her up so much to the extent that she could still feel as though he was still pounding her. Yes. Orion responded curiously. Has the village elder sent for you yet? she asked. No, Orion shook his head, his eyes following Grandma Celia as she walked out of the backyard and into the kitchen. But my mother mentioned that it would be sometime this week. He watched as she returned a moment later, holding a bowl of the same apple dot shaped fruits he had enjoyed the day before. Go ahead and eat, she said, joining them on the floor. The aroma of the fruit filled the air as she reached for one and took a bite. The juice dripped down her chin as she chewed, savoring the sweetness. Orion followed suit, taking a bite of the fruit and relishing its flavor. Beove as time passed, they started to engage in conversation, delving into topics that resonated with Orion's own thoughts. Initially, Orion had braced himself for a dull evening of dining in bountiful raw flesh and pussy juice, but surprisingly, after plowing her vagina to the extent that she could no longer walk properly, he found himself not wanting to continue with the task at hand. The reason being, he was thoroughly enjoying the conversation and didn't want it to end. As they chatted, he learned that there were two other women besides the three of them living there. He couldn't help but wonder what the other half of the five residents looked and acted like. However, he didn't dwell on it too much as he was confident he would meet them sooner or later. During their conversation, Orion found himself drawn to Grandma Celia and couldn't resist taking her hand and placing it on his dick since he was still naked. Initially, she was confused, but he gently guided her hand up and down, and soon she understood. She continued talking and stroking his penis obliviously, unaware of the impact her firm grip was having on Orion, who was experiencing a flood of sensations from her touch. And every time Orion's penis throbbed, indicating that he was about to come, she eagerly pressed her lips on his shaft and savored every last drop, refusing to leave even a single sip. As the conversation carried on, the sun slowly sank below the horizon. Orion interrupted the discussion with a subtle ahem, signaling that it was time to head back home. Turning to the two elderly women before him, he announced, I should probably start making my way back before my mother comes looking for me. Grandma Vivian chuckled and responded, Yes, you're right. I definitely don't want to hear Celeste screaming in a teary voice. Make sure to give her my regards when you get home. Okay, Orion replied before turning his attention to Grandma Celia, who had just stood up from the ground with a sticky, whitish liquid. His semen, at the corner of her mouth. Although he wasn't able to fuck her, having her wrap her mouth around his penis, continuously was more than enough for him to relish in. At least I learned a lot of new things, Orion thought to himself. 
With the wealth of knowledge he had acquired, it was unlikely that anyone other than his family and close neighbors would realize that he doesn't remember anything. As he turned and walked towards the door, Grandma Celia accompanied him and opened it, bidding him farewell as he stepped out. She closed the door behind him, and he was left to make his way home, reflecting on the enlightening conversation he had just had with the two aged women. Chapter 46 Orion's Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio On his way home, Orion was seized by the urge to knock on the doors of his neighboring huts to discover who lived there and who would answer. However, he quickly dismissed the idea. He felt too lazy to go through with it, and the thought of potentially having to answer personal questions from his neighbors, who he was sure already knew quite a bit about him, like Grandma Celia and the others, was off. Putting. I'm home. Orion declared, opening the door with a resounding click to ensure that his announcement was heard throughout the entire hut. Where did you go? His older sister questioned suspiciously, causing Orion's gaze to shift downward to meet her inquisitive stare. Orion let out a tired sigh. Not even a welcome, he muttered under his breath. Rena snorted at her brother's reaction. Not unless I know where you've been, she retorted taking another bite of the Kalna fruit she had been munching on. Exhaling dramatically, Orion replied, I went to visit Grandma Celia's hut, as he walked over to his sister. Once he arrived, he paused and picked up one of the five remaining Kalna fruits, savoring its delicious taste. As he ate, he pondered how these fruits could fill him up and provide an unnatural amount of energy. He couldn't help but wonder how they were grown and why he hadn't seen any meat or other delicacies. Ha! Huh. Rena stared at Orion in confusion, her suspicion growing with each passing second. And when did you start visiting those old women's huts? she asked incredulously. Orion smiled at Rena's incredulous expression. Since today, he replied, trying to reassure her. Seeing that she still looked doubtful, he added, weren't you the one who told me to get close to Grandma Celia and the rest? He snorted in amusement, recalling the conversation they had had earlier. As he walked up towards her, he couldn't help but notice Rena's linen shirt. Without a second thought, he went behind her and slipped his hand underneath it, searching for something specific. After a moment, he found what he was looking for and grasped it tightly. Rena raised an eyebrow at his sudden action but didn't say anything as she continued to eat her fruit. Well, I didn't think you would take my word seriously, she finally replied, still looking a bit skeptical. While cupping her breast and playing with her nipples, Orion chose to divert the question by asking, where is mom? She went out to fetch water. Fuck. Orion couldn't help but internally cursed out loudly within his mind. He had almost forgotten that he was supposed to join her in fetching the water. Rena continued her response with a hint of annoyance in her voice, she looked for you, but since she couldn't find you and didn't know where you had gone, she decided to fetch the water herself. Orion felt guilty and decided to make it up to her by waking up early tomorrow and going to fetch the water by himself. As he released Rena's nipples from his grip, he couldn't help but feel a twinge of desire. He quickly shook his head to dispel those thoughts and headed towards the backyard to wash himself. After a quick bath, Orion walked back into the hut and was surprised to see Gina chatting with Rena. He decided to join them and listen quietly to their conversation, picking up some interesting details about their lives. He learned that Gina had visited a friend early in the morning when he had left, and some minute details about the kind of farming work Rena does. Hey Rena, Orion asked with a curious tone, what gifts did you awaken? Rena shot a cunning smile towards her brother and replied, I'm not going to tell you. She stuck out her tongue at Orion in defiance. If you really want to know, then try to remember it yourself. Gina couldn't help but chuckle at her older sister's retort and shook her head at the behavior of her two older siblings. Orion was about to respond but the sound of the door opening drew his attention. He quickly sprang to his feet and headed towards the door, knowing exactly who it was. As Celeste walked in, Orion's instincts kicked in, and he rushed to help her carry the clay pot down from her head. Celeste, however, couldn't help but appreciate his newfound courteous behavior. 
Initially, she felt a pang of frustration when she couldn't locate it on her way out. However, she knew that staying angry at him forever wouldn't do any good. Orion deftly took the heavy clay pot filled with water and headed towards the backyard to fill it up in the tank. Come and help me, Gina, Orion hollered at his younger sister. I'm on my way. Gina swiftly got up from the floor and ran towards him to lend a hand. Observing all of this, Rena shook her head and muttered under her breath, children. But her thoughts were interrupted as she noticed her mother reaching for the last fruit in the bowl. With a sigh, Rena watched her mother happily munch on the kalna. Parents, she muttered to herself. At times, Rena found herself feeling vexed by her family's quirks and habits. But despite all of that, there were moments when she couldn't help but love them and feel grateful for their presence in her life. Noticing her daughter lost in thought, Celeste finished eating the kalna in her hand and walked towards their room. I heard that the messenger from the village chief might come tomorrow, so you all should go take a bath so that we can sleep early tonight, she said in a loud voice, making sure her words reached her children's ears. Especially you, Orion. Okay, mom, they all responded in unison, with only Rena nodding her head in agreement but letting out a tired sigh. True to Celeste's words, as darkness descended, they all took their baths and retired to their mats to sleep, preparing for the arrival of the village chief's messenger the following day. Chapter 47 Fiona, The Well, Woman You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio Rena's frustration was palpable as she asked her mother, Mom, are you absolutely certain that you didn't miss here? Had she known her mother truly meant what she said yesterday, Rena would have crept out of the hut before dawn to make it to work. Celeste, worn out and exhausted, shook her head in response to her daughter's repeated query. Don't worry about what we'll eat today, she assured her daughter with a tired sigh. I will take care of it. Rena huffed in frustration and turned her head away from her mother in a fit of anger. She wished her mother understood the importance of maintaining her reputation as one of the top workers on the farm. However, witnessing her brother's coming dot of dot age ceremony and receiving an official invitation to the village chief's hut was a once dot in dot a dot lifetime event that she simply couldn't miss. It seemed like a reasonable excuse to skip work today. However, Rena's eyes flickered nervously around her junior sister and mother, but Orion was nowhere in sight. And how about Orion? What if he misses his own invitation, she voiced her concern, highlighting the problem at hand. Initially, when she had informed him that their mother had gone to fetch water alone after failing to locate him, she never expected him to wake up before dawn and head out to fetch water himself. Though his initiative pleased her, she couldn't help but worry about the messenger's arrival. What if they came and Orion was nowhere to be found? Celeste let out a frustrated sigh as she replied, well, let's just hope he makes it back from the well on time. She often felt at a loss with her son's behavior. However, his absence did allow her to finally discuss with her daughters the topic she and Orion had talked about the day before. This morning, as the sun had yet to rise and everyone was sound asleep, I quietly slipped out of the room with a clay pot in one hand and a kalna fruit in the other and went out to fetch the water by myself. Although I have only come across two fruits. The bright yellow mango dot-shaped fruit and the light green apple dot-shaped one, both of which tasted the same, and of which I still yet don't know the name of the latter. I am curious if there are any other fruits in the village or if there will only ever be fruits to survive on. And, to be honest, after spending almost half of my lifespan on earth, I don't think that it will take much time before I get tired of eating them, even if they are a bit sweet and delicious. As I arrived at the well, the faint light of dawn barely illuminated the area. As expected, there was no queue of people waiting for their turn to collect water. Without any hesitation, I walked forward, making my way towards the well. As I approached, my eyes once more fell upon a remarkable sight. There was a towering, muscular woman beside the well. Fiona, the Amazonian beauty, with thick curves and a toned, imposing physique. Her behind was exposed, covered only by a small loincloth that barely concealed her shapely buttocks. She was bent over the well, 
moving her hands skillfully to control the flow of water as it filled a plastic bucket beside her. The sight was as visually pleasing as I had remembered it. To be honest, if it weren't for Fiona's towering and muscular figure, along with her firm and enormous ass, I might have mistaken her for Aunt Greta's neighbor, also coincidentally named Fiona. Regardless, as she stood up and bent down again, I stealthily approached her and uncovered my throbbing penis and gently poked my shaft through the fabric of her loincloth, feeling the warmth of her vagina beneath it. To my surprise, she didn't seem to notice my presence behind her. She was so focused on using her gift that my actions went unnoticed until she straightened her back and brought her two muscular thighs together, trapping my penis within their confines. Ha! Huh. She exclaimed as she spun around in surprise, applying unintentional pressure on my finger, causing it to slip out of her grasp with a forceful jolt. Damn it! I couldn't help but curse internally as that was all it took for my shaft to vibrate violently, causing a small amount of precum to stain its tip. As she turned around and laid her eyes on me, she let out a deep sigh, attempting to calm herself down from the sudden jolt of surprise. Oh, it's you, she said, her voice laced with a hint of relief. With a noticeable curiosity in her eyes, she asked, did you come to fetch water alone? I nodded my head, trying to hide a smirk that threatened to break out on my face as I couldn't help but notice the glimmer of curiosity in Fiona's eyes. It was obvious that my early arrival at the well had caught her off guard, given that most villagers only came out after sunrise to fetch their water. I had been racking my brain for hours, trying to find a way to catch Fiona's attention. Then, during a conversation with Grandma Celia and Grandma Vivian, I stumbled upon a piece of information that could potentially work. Without hesitation, I decided to put it into practice and see if it would work. Also, fetching water by myself was a total no-dot-brainer. I mean, with my mother enforcing a no-dot-fap rule until my awakening ceremony, it was the perfect excuse to get closer to Fiona. As I anticipated, Fiona regarded me with a pensive gaze for a moment before nodding in comprehension and extending her right hand towards me. Your payment, she requested prompting me to place the clay pot down and present her with the kalna. After carefully inspecting the fruit, she set it down on the ground near the well and pivoted around, extending her hand as she readied to activate her gift. Occasionally missing content, please report errors in time. Chapter 48 Fiona, The Well, Woman, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wait a minute. I expressed, swiftly stopping her from activating her gift. As she turned her head to the side and looked at me from the corner of her eye, I couldn't help but notice the raised eyebrow and blank expression on her face. With a hint of curiosity in her voice, she asked, what is it? Immediately, I said, do you mind sharing a few details about your gift before you continue? I watched as her expression transformed from suspicion to curiosity, and finally to understanding. As she turned around and stared down at me, I could feel the weight of her gaze. Truthfully, she said, it's not every day that someone asks me about my gift, so I'm not sure what to say. But then, to my surprise, her lips curved into a smile as she continued, go ahead, ask me what you want to know about my gift. I nodded, wanting to speak. However, due to our close proximity, my nose unintentionally caught a whiff of her arousing rosy body scent and brushed against her left bountiful breast through the fabric of her tight tube top. I felt the urge to step back and give us both some space, but since she didn't seem to mind our close proximity, I didn't say anything. Instead, I tried to take advantage of the situation and continued our conversation. Can you tell me what your gift does? I asked, my lips unintentionally brushing against her soft constricted nipples as I spoke. Although I had initially wished I was a bit taller when I first met her, I reminded myself that I was only 16 and had to be patient for my growth spurt. Her expression became pensive, lost in thought as I tenderly brushed my lips over her hidden nipples. Despite my actions, she remained silent, allowing the moment to linger. Suddenly, Breaking the silence, she cleared her throat and spoke with conviction, my gift allows me to extract water from the earth. Her words took me by surprise, and I halted everything I was doing to focus on her. 
Looking up at her in amazement, I asked, you can pull out water from the ground. I needed clarification. Fiona stifled her laughter, clearly amused by my reaction. Yes, although I doubt you haven't seen me use my gift, she said. But if you want, I can show you how I do it. With a gesture towards the well, she invited me to come closer to it. All right, show me how you do it, I said, withdrawing my body from hers, and making my way around the well. Fiona turned towards it, her eyes following me as I peered down into the murky depths. You've got to be kidding me, I muttered to myself as I squinted into the well, seeing nothing but black, muddy sand. There was no sign of water anywhere. Damn, I muttered under my breath, quickly realizing that Fiona's ability was indeed impressive. After all, I had seen my mother sculpt a clay pot without touching it, so I shouldn't have been too surprised. However, I quickly remembered that every gift must have its limitations, just like my mother's ability to sculpt clay pots without touching them. Are you ready? Fiona asked, her arms outstretched over the well. Yes, I nodded eagerly, eager to witness her gift in action and see how she could pull water from the ground. Despite the limitations that Fiona's gift might have, this discovery only heightened my excitement for my upcoming awakening ceremony. I couldn't wait to see what kind of gift and inner strength I would awaken within myself. The possibilities were endless, and the anticipation was exhilarating. Her hands emitted a mesmerizing deep green glow as she moved them around the well, gesturing for the water to rise from the blackish muddy sand. And rise it did, a clear stream of water spilling forth in contrast to the dark sand. Guided by Fiona, the water flowed into my clay pot, filling it to the brim with refreshing clarity. She commanded the stream of water with effortless ease, and as the pot overflowed, she withdrew her hands, the green glow fading away. The remaining water trickled back into the well, absorbed by the murky sand. Okay, no matter how accustomed I was becoming to this primitive world of magic, watching that scene unfold before me was still an incredible sight to behold. Turning to me with a smile on her face, Fiona asked, how was it? It was simply incredible to watch, I said, immediately taking the chance to compliment her, you look absolutely stunning when you use your gift. Her smile widened slowly, like the petals of a flower blooming under the sun, and somehow, I could tell my words had touched her heart. She looked at me and asked, what's your name, curious to know more about me. Envied that my response was immediate. I'm Orion, I stated confidently. She nodded her head in response, her eyes shining with a newfound curiosity. I will remember it, she replied with a hint of playfulness in her voice. Suddenly, her attention was drawn to something behind me, and she squinted her eyes, trying to get a better view. It seems that the other villagers are coming to fetch their water, she said, turning back to me. You should probably leave before it becomes too crowded around here. As I nodded in response, a surge of creativity compelled me to improvise one last thought. With my penis still erect and hanging out in the open, I picked up the pot and balanced it precariously on top of my head before I stared back at her. Sorry, I said, my hands gripping the sides of the pot tightly. But, do you think you could help me bring my tulga down a little? Initially, Fiona appeared confused, but her gaze soon shifted downward to where my throbbing veiny penis was hanging out in the open, supporting the weight of my tulga, which rested on top of it. Chapter 49 Going Home on Time You are listening at NovelFull.audio As she gave a subtle nod of understanding, her eyes fixed on the tulga, she slowly descended to her knees, to cover my hard veiny penis with it. But as she began to tug it down, her fingers grazed against my throbbing shaft, sending a jolt of electricity through my body, causing my already erected penis to pulsate with pleasure under her skillful touch. Despite her initial efforts, the cloth stubbornly refused to budge over my erect penis. Frustrated, Fiona abruptly shifted her focus to it, wrapping her wide delicate fingers around it and gently pumping it downwards. As her touch sent a wave of warmth through me, she deftly pulled the tulga downwards, completely covering my private parts in a fluid motion. My breath hitched involuntarily as her hand brushed against my foreskin, rubbing away my pre-cum while she withdrew it from under my tulga. 
Uh, I let out a quiet moan, unable to control my reaction to her touch. I kept my gaze fixed on her as she stood up and straightened her back, her hand still outstretched as she gazed at the thick whitish liquid on her finger, confusion etched on her face. Suddenly, her expression changed to one of realization as she spoke, this is your. Before she could finish, I interjected, that is my semen, letting out a deep sigh. It seems that I mistakenly cummed while you were holding my erected penis. And my mother even told me not to waste it, I added, faking a slight embarrassment. Don't worry about it, she said reassuringly, it's completely natural for a young boy like you. But as you grow older, you'll learn to control yourself. She nodded understandingly and flashed a warm smile. Although all I wanted was for her to wrap her firm hand around my hand and pump it a little, what happened next made me gulp down my saliva. Fiona extended her hand towards her mouth and savored my thick whitish semen that coated her fingers, swallowing it with relish. As she turned her attention back to me, she remarked, You see, not a drop of your semen went to waste. I nodded in response and managed to utter a soft, thank you. She nodded back and observed me as I turned around to head back home. On the way, I strolled past some villagers who were already queuing up in the middle of a long line leading towards the well. Some of them courteously greeted me, and I reciprocated while hurrying across the reddish clay road to reach home on time. If my mother's information was correct, then I had to be there before the messenger arrived. It took me roughly 30 minutes to make my way back home due to the distance and the poor road condition. As I approached our hut, I pushed the fence open with one hand and closed it behind me. Coming to a stop in front of our hut, I extended my hand once more and knocked on the door. The voices I had heard from inside abruptly fell silent, and several sets of footsteps echoed, indicating that someone was approaching the door. Who's there? A voice called out from behind the door. I didn't even need a split second to recognize the owner of the voice. Come on, you guys haven't forgotten about your brother so soon, have you? I exclaimed with a deep, loud sigh. As expected, the wooden door suddenly flung open, and a small figure came dashing out, screaming, brother. I quickly shifted my body to the side, positioning myself so that she missed me and fell to the ground. Phew. That was a close call. I sighed internally. Brother. Sniff. Gina, lying flat on the ground, turned her tearful eyes to me. I wanted to reply, but my mother's voice suddenly boomed, and her figure came into view. Stop blaming your brother when you were the one who ran into him, she said with an amused tone in her voice. Come on, get up and dust yourselves off. I don't want the village chief's messenger to see you like that. Gina quickly dried up her fake tears, and Rena walked out to help me carry the clay pot from the top of my head. But not before painfully pinching my arm and the side of my stomach with her strong fingers. You deserve it, were the last words she whispered into my ears before walking back into the hut to pour the water into the tank. Dot observing the different reactions of my sisters, I was about to enter the room when my eyes locked with my mother's. I looked away trying to act nonchalant, but suddenly felt her hand catch my ears. Ouch! I exclaimed, wincing in pain. As soon as she realized her actions had hurt me, she quickly released my ears and flicked her finger across my forehead with enough force to make me massage it carefully. Why did you go out alone to fetch water without informing me? Didn't I tell you that the village chief's messenger would be arriving today? Besides, we already have enough water in the tank, so you should have just waited until tomorrow or even until the evening, scolded my mother with a hint of annoyance in her tone. Her gorgeous black hair swayed back and forth as she ranted about my actions and their consequences, pointing out the various difficulties that could arise if I missed the messenger. Despite her rebuke, a small smile crept across my face as she continued to lecture me. All of a sudden, she fell silent and knit her eyebrows together in a scowl as she glared at me. Why are you smiling, she demanded. Do you think that I can't punish you for your actions, her voice laced with a mixture of bewilderment and irritation. In response, I simply shook my head and replied, you know, 
this might just be the first time since I lost my memory that I've ever seen you angry, and even with that fiery look on your face, you still managed to take my breath away with your beauty. As I watched her stunned expression slowly fade into one of defeat, I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction wash over me. Chapter 50 The Village Chief's Messenger You are listening at NovelFull.audio But just as I thought the tense moment had passed, a loud snort erupted from Gina. With a scoff, she quickly dismissed my compliment, saying, Don't mind him, Mom. He's just trying to talk his way out of trouble. Believe me, you definitely don't look stunning when you're angry, so don't fall for his lies. It took all of my effort not to click my tongue against my cheeks as I looked at Gina in pity. As expected, my mother's expression, which had seemed to calm down, immediately turned to Gina and bore into her with an intense gaze. Gina gulped nervously, realizing the gravity of her words. She turned her head away and stammered, I did I didn't mean it like that, okay. But before she could explain any further, my mother's finger jabbed towards the entrance of the hut. Get inside. Now, she commanded. Yeah, this was definitely the first time that I am seeing her so angry. Without hesitation, Gina sauntered into the hut, eager to escape our mother's withering glare. As I turned to follow her, the sound of heavy footsteps grinding and crushing against the reddish clay soil reached my ears, causing me to pause. I pivoted on my heel and focused my gaze on the approaching figures. One of them was a grown man dressed in a tulga similar to mine, carrying a cotton dot woven bag over one shoulder. The other was a young girl, roughly my height and age, with short black hair and a piece of cloth tied around her waist that stopped at her thighs. Her long dot sleeved midriff top was held together by buttons at the front, revealing a generous amount of cleavage for all to see. Noticing her slightly perky breasts and toned long legs, I couldn't help but think that she bore a striking figure to Rena, albeit with her own unique alluring appeal. As I turned to face the newcomers, I realized that my mother was already politely greeting them with a warm smile. It didn't take long for me to recognize the man as the village chief's messenger, and judging by the girl's resemblance to him, I could only assume that she was his daughter. After a few seconds, they came to a stop in front of us, and the man addressed us with a courteous smile. Is this the household of Miss Celeste, he asked, his gaze shifting from my mother to me and then back again. Yes, I am Celeste, and this is my son, Orion, my mother responded with a nod and pointed towards me. Taking the hint, I stepped forward and introduced myself. My name is Orion, I expressed. The man nodded in acknowledgement and cleared his throat before introducing himself. Even though you might have already guessed, I will introduce myself again, he said. I am Thak, the village chief's messenger, and this is my daughter Tala. She will also be participating in this year's awakening ceremony. He gestured towards his daughter, who remained silent and simply nodded in response. Thak proceeded, as per the village head's instructions, your awakening ceremony is scheduled to commence tomorrow. Therefore, you are expected to be present in the village chief's compound immediately after sunrise tomorrow, to initiate the awakening process. Pausing briefly, he allowed his words to sink in before continuing, I regret that I was unable to deliver this message yesterday, as intended. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, I was unable to do so. I sincerely hope that you can forgive me for this delay, he apologized, his exhaustion evident in a long, tired sigh that escaped his lips. Please don't concern yourself with it. We appreciate you coming today to inform us, my mother responded graciously, conveying her gratitude for his presence. Thak acknowledged her response with a nod, and proceeded to draw his handbag forward, reaching inside to retrieve a stunning wooden chip. It was intricately carved, depicting rays of light spreading outwards, and he presented it to me with care. I eagerly extended my hand to receive the beautiful wooden chip from Thak, marveling at the intricate design of the rays of light spreading outwards. As previously mentioned, it is essential that you arrive promptly after sunrise. However, to gain entry into the compound, it is compulsory that you present this chip to the guards. Make sure not to forget it, 
or risk being labeled as a latecomer and losing valuable points, Thack explained, arching his eyebrows in a knowing manner. I nodded my head in agreement, fully comprehending the importance of the wooden chip and the potential consequences of forgetting it. Good. I will be expecting you tomorrow, Orion, he responded as he turned his attention back to my mother and said, see you later Miss Celeste. All right, have a good day, Mr. Thack, my mother politely responded, and we watched as Mr. Thack and his daughter turned around and walked away. Ignoring the fact that the little girl didn't say anything, I couldn't help but notice the way her perky buttocks kissed the fabric tied around her waist, and the hypnotic sway it showcased as she walked away. I withdrew my eyes from her waist the moment I was done appreciating the view and turned towards my mother, asking her the first question that popped into my mind immediately after that conversation. What does Mr. Thack mean by points? Dot? I questioned. With a chuckle, my mother proceeded to explain, remember how I told you that you will be learning how to reproduce with a woman and to awaken your gift and inner strength. Noel.n, yes, I remember, I replied, intrigued, well, during your training, you will receive points based on your performance. The points represent the kind of gift you can request from the village chief or what kind of gift the chief will give you. So, it's best to avoid situations where your points will be deducted, unless you don't mind failing your awakening ceremony, she added, emphasizing the importance of the points.